Hello everyone. So as we know, our beautiful summer is gone, fall is out the door, and we're getting closer to winter. But even in the fall, we always love to be able to eat comfort food. And in my family, one of our comfort food is polenta. And what's fun about polenta is that there's so many ways you can actually uh, make polenta. You could actually add ingredients to the polenta itself, to the cornmeal, or you can just put it right on top. But polenta is one of those dishes that you can make it very simple with a little bit of spaghetti sauce on top. That's how my husband loves it. But I like to get a little more adventurous the way my father did. And he used to uh, sometimes incorporate beans right into the polenta or you can put it on top of the polenta. So we're going to start off with just cooking our polenta. Right now I have one cup right there and I'm going to add one more cup because if there's ever leftover polenta in my family, um, it's never a waste, trust me. So we have two and a half cups of polenta, but I'll probably be adding more. I'm just going to check out um, where my water level is going to reach when I add my water. So uh, right now I'm going to be adding cold water, always cold. This is something that I learned after getting a lot of lumpy polentas. If you start your polenta in cold water, you're never going to get those lumps. But if you're going to try and add polenta to your hot boiling water, uh, you better stir fast with that wooden stick because I'm sure you're going to get some, some lumps in your polenta. Now there's different types. That's a kind of, not super fine, but it is a fine polenta. But I also like when the polenta is a little coarse and you feel uh, the polenta under your teeth. So you can even mix your polenta if you want. Okay, Mango, you're gonna have to go, sweetie. Okay, so here we go. Add one, two, three. And now I will add more polenta to this, more cornmeal. So this time I am going to add a coarser cornmeal. I do have fine and I even have one that's extra fine, but just to add a little extra texture is fine. So we're going to add, well, there we go, one cup of a coarser polenta. And remember this is really your preference. If you like it fine, do not add the coarse. But I don't mind. So we have one of the course and we're going to add if you see since we added this polenta to cold water have you noticed there's no lumps whatsoever. At this point what we can do is start adding salt and you're going to see as you're cooking this down, because I have a new way of cooking polenta. We're going to add salt to taste. We're going to add a little bit of olive oil. And I also add my mushroom powder to this. So give me a second. There we go. One heaping tablespoon of shiitake mushroom powder. Now, a lot of people ask me where I get my powder. I do not buy it already powdered. What I do is I simply buy my dry shiitake mushrooms and I go to my local Asian market for that. And then I just put it through my Nutribullet and I get powder in no time at all. And it cost me so much less than if you're going to buy it already powdered. So here we go. We've got our um, polenta, we've got our water, we've got the oil, salt, and now we're going to cook our polenta. And what I normally do is I start it on a high because I want to bring this to a boil. And once it goes to a boil, then I will simmer it and cover it with the lid and just let it cook slowly. So I am going to put this on the burner and then when my polenta is done, 
we're going to show you what we're going to do to this dish. Uh, so always keep some water handy and add a little at a time until you're satisfied with the taste and texture of your polenta. And it really doesn't take that long to cook. But because I'm putting it on a low heat, I won't even have to mix it. Otherwise, the old tradition way, my parents used to make this huge pot and they used to have this very thick stick and they used to just stand there. As the polenta is boiling, they would have to mix it and mix it. And let me tell you something, your arms would cramp. So, um, I found a way of making my life easy and my arms don't hurt at all. So, there you go. Cold water, we're going to bring it to a boil and then we're going to lower it to a simmer and we're going to keep it covered and once in a while just go check make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom and check to see if you need to add more water you will know when you need to add water because it's going to look like it's going to need more water and taste your polenta but be very careful because polenta is hot you will burn yourself so make sure to be careful when you're um when you're tasting your polenta so um there we go i'm going to put this on the burner but remember this will take in more water so either you're going to use water or you're going to use uh, some broth that really is up to you how you want to flavor it i'm going to be adding some delicious kabuka squash roasted kabuka squash that i'm going to mash and i'm going to put it right into the polenta and um Actually, I'm going to wait till it comes to a boil, so I'm going to show you. Uh, and then when uh, I see that my polenta is going to need more water, I am going to show you what it looks like so you have an idea when you're cooking polenta yourself. But polenta is a great, great, a great thing to cook because there's so many ways you can make polenta. Once it's cooked, you can lay it down on a flat sheet. You could put it back in the oven. You can actually make kind of like a lasagna with it, what I usually do is make it a little more dense and then I layer it. I do uh, polenta and I do roasted peppers and onions and maybe more polenta or whatever you want to put inside your polenta. So as you can tell, yeah, I'm going to show you right now. Start this ahead of time and then once your polenta is cooked, I would say uh, lay it down flat on a tray or a baking dish and your polenta is ready to do whatever you want to do with it. What's good about polenta is it doesn't have to be done last minute. You can make some nice squares. You can make some nice rings. You can reheat polenta. Polenta is delicious. So many different ways. So uh, get creative and try making some polenta, especially if you've never made it. it I'm telling you, you're going to be surprised how delicious it is. And remember, polenta is a very simple dish, but it's what you do to it. If you want, you could also um, fry up some chicken meat with some veggies and you could put that right on top of your polenta drizzle some olive oil and you can eat it that way or like I said a very simple way where you could just do simple polenta and then you put some pasta sauce and some grated cheese on top now if you don't want to use olive oil you could also use if you want some vegan butter in here but I like the olive oil and the one that I have is such a flavorful uh, it's such a nice, strong tasting olive oil, so it really adds a nice uh, flavor to the polenta. So, here we go. I have it on high. And remember, be very careful when you're cooking polenta, because polenta can spit up on you. Anyhow, just keep mixing it till it comes to a boil, and then, like I said, put the lid on it, and forget about it. Just come by once in a while, and just give it a mix. Polenta does not like high temperature if you're not mixing it vigorously and often non-stop the way my parents did it was a non-stop mix and they had this very large long stick because they used to always make a lot of it and they used to just like stir it and stir it and stir it and they used to take breaks because your arm would get tired as you see, it's already getting too thick. So I will drop some water in here. And like I said, I'll probably end up using, uh, I'll probably end up putting more for sure. And by the time you're done, this polenta is going to reach all the way up to the top.
So make sure you have water right next to you when you're making your polenta. And a good way of doing it is having hot water ready for you so it doesn't change the temperature of your polenta. Because if it's cooking and then you add cold water to your polenta, it's going to bring down the heat. It's going to cool off the polenta and it's going to take a little longer to cook it. So make sure your water is hot when you're adding it. And as you can tell, it's already getting thicker. So I'll probably be adding more water before I put the lid on this. Okay, there is my boil. And now I'm just going to let it do its thing. And once in a while, I will come and check it and keep adding water to my palette. Okay, meanwhile, we're waiting. So what I'm going to do... I roasted this the other night, so I'm going to start cleaning the skin off my kabuka. Now, I always, I always, always, always cook it with the skin. Okay, as you can very well see, it's way too thick, so I am going to add one and a half more cups of water. Remember, polenta needs to drink for it to swell up. So I put another extra one and a half and I'm just starting to cook it. Usually I do this all by eye. I don't measure and I'm trying to measure for you guys. But here we go. And again, it depends also on the taste, right? Some people like their polenta very, very firm and some people like it more uh, liquidy. I know that my husband's side of the family made their polenta one way and we made our polenta complete different way. We used to put it on plates. My husband's family used to put it on this big wooden block in the middle of the table. And everybody ate off the same block. So we're just going to let it cook. And I'm going to come back in a little bit and show you if I need more water or not. There we go. Lit. Okay. So basically... There we go. Basically, you just want to. There we go. Try not to cut myself. There we go. And we're going to use just the Not the skin, just the kabuka. And these are roasted. So, now you have options. You can simply cube this and add it to your polenta. Or you can... I'm going to put this aside because I'll pop that in my mouth for sure. I love eating the skin of the kabuka. Or you can squish it and put it in all mashed. That really is up to you. How you want to to put it in into your polenta and this makes just a nice I call it harvest polenta my father used to love putting beans in his polenta that's the way my father's family used to make his polenta different places in Italy they all did things a little different there we go. And if you have any roasted garlic, I always, always, always um, put garlic in my, when I'm roasting. And what you want to do is um, just kind of squish it up like this. And then we're going to add it to our mixture. And it adds a nice flavor to your dish. Just make sure you take off that little, little butt end. And you're going to squish, squish, squish. My hands are clean, guys, so don't start freaking out. Some of you don't want to see me touching my food. But my family hasn't died yet. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just, you know, this is the way I cook. This is the way my mom cooked. We did not use gloves to cook. 
there we go squish 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 and this will be added to our mixture now the fun part about this is you can make this kabuka squash ahead of time and then keep it in the fridge and there's so many things you could also do with the kabuka squash there we go very healthy by the way kabuka squash is very low in calories yet it speaks plenty for itself it really is an amazing amazing vegetable and it's so loaded with so many things that your body needs there we go And you could also like half squish and half chunk. That really is up to you. Now, if you want, you could even go a step further and maybe uh, add a little bit of smoke. If you like smoke to your squash and it adds more flavor to your polenta. So just chop, chop, chop. And it's going to add a nice color too. Our plant is doing great. Here we go. You know, it's funny because my husband never wanted a kabuka squash. My husband was a hunter. My husband uh, wasn't really on board in the beginning when I told him too bad. I know some of you might say, oh, that's not very nice of you. Why are you forcing him? Well, you know what? If anything, if you ask him today, it's the best thing he ever did for, for himself for a green to giving it a try. And there was no way. I, you know, I love, my, I love my kids. And I love my husband. There's no question. But, you know, we have to be examples to our kids. And we have to support our kids. We have to support them. My daughter just couldn't do it anymore. She just couldn't have any more animal products. And I was not going to bring it into the house and devastate her more than she was already devastated that day. My heart broke when I saw, and like I, you know, I have a video up where I explain it. If anybody really knows my daughter, uh, she never cried. So when she came home in the state that she was in, my heart just dropped. I says, oh my God, what did she watch? What is it that she watched? And you know, it's funny because all these years growing up, you know, we had to eat meat. That was, you know, without meat, we're going to die. This is the way life is. We got to kill animals and we got to eat meat. This was instilled in us, and not just my family. And you know what's funny? My father hardly ate meat. My father used to live on mushrooms. I was talking to my sister today about it. And I was telling her, I said, do you remember, Daddy? You tell him, say, Dad, what do you want for lunch? Mushroom sandwich. What do you want for lunch, Dad? Mushroom sandwiches. What are you going to eat, Dad? Don't worry about me. I'm going to cook some mushrooms. And if he did eat some meat... You're lucky if he ate a wing. We were brought up to think that we had to eat meat to survive. You know, eat your meat. Put that in your mouth. If you don't want the carrots, leave the carrots, but eat the meat. It was like crazy. Today that I think about it, I mean, I wish my mom would be alive today because I know my mom would be on board, my father would be on board, especially my father. Mm, this is so good. Yeah, my father would be on board without a problem. Polenta's cooking. My kabuka is readier. You see what I do now, guys? I haven't bought cellophane. I can't even tell you how long. And these are all bags that I have, still have. What I do is, see, over here there's a hole. I'll tape that. But what I do is I wash it. And then I reuse the bags. But 
There we go. That is ready. I'm going to chow on this. That's for sure. I love it. I eat everything. Mm -hmm. I'd say about this much. This is going to go into my compost bin. My cast iron. I don't clean my cast iron unless I have to. And that's when there's just way too much at the bottom. But I love when, and I use it every day, guys. And I love it when whatever I'm cooking is picking up all those little bits. It's just delicious. A little olive oil. A little salt. Some black pepper. bit of chili just a little bit of chili flakes and we're just gonna toss them So these are going to go into a 450 and you just want to char them just a little bit and you do want to put, here I'm going to show you, you do want to put, you just place your aluminum paper right on top like this so it doesn't uh, scorch them right away or you can just lightly place it on top. You want to be able that the heat goes in and not steam them. You don't want these steamed. So I'm going to put these into the oven. There you go. I have a can of white beans that I'm going to rinse. I'm just going to check my polenta. Yeah. There we go. Extra mushroom powder. I'm adding extra oil. I did add extra water. Now look how thick it is already. Now this is really up to you. If you want your polenta to be thicker, then you don't add as much water, but you do want your polenta to cook. So you have to taste it. Be careful not to burn yourself. And see how you like the texture. This is almost done, believe it or not. But I will add a little extra water. Because I am not ready. And I'm just going to mix it in without making a mess here while I'm holding this camera. But I'm going to mix this in, put the cover back on, and then... Okay, so we're just going to get the water in there, and then I'm going to cover it again on low. But at this point, I am going to put my squash in because I can. Now, like I said, if you want to put... Sorry, Erica. If you want to put beans, you could add... Um, beans into your polenta you can leave your polenta simple it really is up to you Oop. now you can mash your a uh, kabuka squash or you could also uh, leave it in chunks either way it's going to be very good Just a little extra water. Now if you want, you could also add milk instead of water. It just makes it a little richer in taste. I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible because I will be adding stuff on top. Just fold in the water. Remember, everything is on a low heat. Yeah, 
don't attempt to get that polenta with your finger because you will burn yourself. Okay, meanwhile, here we go. Another cast iron. To this, we're going to add olive oil. I'm going to cut some uh, small tomatoes, cherry tomatoes. Vegan food is delicious, guys. And you know, even if you're not vegan, uh, it doesn't hurt to have some dishes that have no animal products whatsoever. And this is just old traditional foods that have been jazzed up a little and a little more modern, but it's still as delicious either way. Now, if you don't have the cherry tomatoes or the plum tomatoes, small, you can use, just dice up a tomato and it's going to work just as well. Now, you could put this in the oven. Normally, I would do this ahead of time, but because my daughter was working, I wasn't able to work in the kitchen. But otherwise, you could do this ahead of time and have all of this prepared so when your polenta is cooked, all you have to do is throw this stuff on top of that hot polenta and enjoy your dinner. But my time was a little crunched today, so I'm going to make do with what I have. So, here we go. A little bit of beans. You can use white beans. You can use any type of bean you want. Olive oil. We're going to add some salt to this. Some black pepper for sure. Okay, I put salt, black pepper, I'm going to put some more chili, this time I will just cut some chili into it. And for contrast, I'm going to use a green chili, I'm going to use a little bit of the seeds, and we're going to use the whole chili. But only a little bit of the seed, because if anybody else wants it a little hotter, they could always add heat to it. Remember, don't throw away those seeds. Put them to dry and just add them to your chili jar. There we go. To this, we're going to add just a little maple. There we go. I love my black pepper. Okay, so I'm going to cook this on the burner. Now, if you want, you could put some uh, fresh cilantro or you can put some fresh basil on this. It really is up to you. What I'm going to do is at the end, I'm going to drizzle some basil oil right on top. And I'm going to pull my asparagus out because they're almost done. So I'll see you in a little bit, guys. There's my asparagus. They're ready to dress my polenta. So that goes up to the side. If you don't have a cast iron pan, guys, it's a must. You should get one. The best thing ever. Delicious, guys. This is done already. There you go. So, I'll see you in a bit.
there you go guys a beautiful beautiful rustic dish for your family so i hope you like this video guys and if you want to see more videos like this uh, don't forget to hit that bell you're going to be notified for new videos share with your friends and family and guess what guys i'll see you in my next video for more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawson Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.